All right, it's live and recording. All right, thank you very much. What's happening, Whom It May? This is Bobby D, and I'm coming to you from what is the name? Is it, do you have a special name for your pod, for your for your room? <laughs> the office. I don't know. It's just the place I record. I like to call something. it a stu- like the anger, the anger studio. There we go. We'll anger go with that. Studios in Villarica, Georgia. <laughs> we'll go with that. I like that. <laughs> so tonight, I am joined uh, by Matthew Plotner of That Anger Management Crap, the podcast about. Uh, our anger and how we can deal with in healthy ways to handle that anger and everything else to do with anger. Uh, and really, uh, Matt has, is, is kind of, he's built himself into an expert in the field. Uh, I think experts give me a little bit too much credit. Wouldn't uh, you? <laughs> well, I don't, I mean, I'll tell you what, there's a reason why your podcast is blowing up and it's, it's, it's because people, uh, you're, what you're bringing to the table is resonant, resonating with people, and it is helping people. Otherwise, it wouldn't be growing. I, I think it's more people like to pry into other people's lives than anything else, and I'm very open about my life. Oh, well, that's why we're here tonight, <laughs> too. <laughs> True enough. So, first things first, uh, I'd, if anybody from his Facebook group, the Anger Management Group, uh, or that anger group or whatever, uh, if that, if they wind up listening to this, uh, I just want you guys to know I'm one of you. I, <laughs> I'm, uh, I love, I love the, uh, the, the, uh, group and, uh, the community that is, is, is building around, uh, your podcast, man. It's pretty cool what you're, what, what you're building, uh, and also your followers and, and, and fans are, are helping build as well. So tonight, I want to, uh, I kind of want you to introduce yourself to whom it may, uh, and, and let them know, uh, a, what you do and how you got to be doing it because your story as to why you began this trek into the topic of anger management and, uh, is, is very interesting to me, interesting to me because it comes from someone who seemingly, A, I identify a little bit with. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry about that. That may not be a good thing. Uh, that person that you talk about in your, your your distant past, I identify with. And I think I'm not alone in that. I believe that uh, that's why your story resonates. So I would like to afford that story to the people who listen to, uh, and, listen to and watch whom it may. So... Uh, go ahead, man. Oh, where do you want to start? Do you want to start at the beginning? Do you want to? I want to start to the angry asshole that you were. Uh, okay. Before we can start there. So let's start the weekend before I got arrested. How about there? That's a good place. No. Uh, yeah. All right then. So the weekend before I got arrested, my wife and I, we'd been married oh, four, almost five years at that point. And it was four, almost five years of complete and total hell for her of just control and violence and aggression and and you name it she dealt with it all and she had had enough i had a suitcase packed for me that friday morning i went to work she said you're going to a friend's house for the weekend i need to figure out if we're going to stay together and what i want to do okay she was never that forceful before in our relationship so i was like okay i'll go stay with a friend for the weekend come home sunday and we are going to the park to talk because come to find out her mom's coming into town and they're staying with us for the weekend and for the week. Oh no, man. Yeah. This is where it gets fun. So we decide, okay, well you guys can come. It was her mom and her dad. They come to the house. We tell them we're going to the park. We have some things to talk about. We didn't tell them what or why or anything. It was just, we have to go to the park for a little bit. So we go to the park. We talk. She, after a lot of, I hate to say coercion, but it kind of was on my part because I wasn't really sincere in any of it looking back on it. It was more placating to what she wanted to hear. And it sounds terrible. I know it does. But that's what you do when you're a control freak. You just tell people what they want to hear because it shuts them up. You're just trying to sell something. Pretty much. Yeah, that's the goal. That's that's the game, if you want to call it, of the control freak. You just, you're selling something to shut them the hell up. You've got to get them in the door. You got to get them in. Yep. Put the asses in the seats. So that's what we do. We have that conversation. She goes, okay, 
let's try to give this another chance. We'll, we'll, we'll work it out. We'll get through this. We get back to the, uh, the apartment. There are a good 10, 12 people in that apartment that I have never met before in my life. And my wife sees my face immediately go into full on rage mode. She goes, okay, you go to the bedroom. Give me a few minutes. I'll deal with my mom. Let me handle this. Okay. I go into the bedroom. Maybe 30, 40 minutes in there. I hear it quiet down. All right. Well, everybody must be gone. All I did, I remember all I did. I walked out of the bedroom, saw her mom sitting on the couch. And I said, that was really rude. I wish she would have at least called us and let us know that these people were coming. Come to find out it was her, her youngest sister. My wife's youngest sister is adopted and it was her birth mom and their kids and a few other people. Oh, so it was this. Yeah. So it was, it was a great thing. Come to find out, but that didn't know that at the time. Do I mean, to me as a, a just somebody who's listening to this, I kind of listen, I, I hear that and I almost, I almost feel like maybe if, if they weren't up front and honest with you about what was going on in the first place, maybe there was a legitimate reason for someone to be upset about that. I, I agree. I think there is legit reason to be upset. I don't think there's legit reason to. So I think what I said was different than what I said in my head, if that makes sense. I think what I've played at the story out of my head to be was something different because after I said that to her mom, Chrissy loses her mind and tells me that I have to get the fuck out for being so rude. No, sorry. First, she told me to apologize to her mother for confronting her. And I told her, fuck you. I'm not apologizing to anybody. This is my damn house. She needs to apologize to me. Then all hell broke loose because obviously. So you, let me, so let's re, let me rewind this <laughs> bit, just a little bit. When you, when you approached, uh, your mother-in-law, did, did you in fact be like, well, that was quite rude. And that was, that was very inappropriate and rude for you to bring all of these people to my home. No, you were, you probably had some uh, choice words that wasn't probably. That, okay. So I now mean, this is making a little bit more sense. But again, in, in my head, it, mm -hmm. it didn't come out that way. In my head, I was basically just stating a fact it was quite um, it was quite rude for you to not tell us these people were coming i know me i'm sure it came out incredibly rude and assholeish i am a new yorker so it probably wasn't the most I eloquent about that. we get, we got to stop right now we can <laughs> <laughs> if it's all fair not new york city if we're going to be honest. okay all so right i'll forgive you buffalo then. it's totally different culture <laughs> kind of it's, it's still new york but it's different culture i'm just kidding i love the new york city whom it maze too i don't i like you guys too it is what it is. But we are assholes. If you're from New York, just accept the fact you're an asshole too. Last it's year, okay. uh, what, uh, I don't, I think it was last year. Maybe it was in 2018. I spent two months in New York. That's a story. That's a different story <laughs> for a different time. But, <laughs> but you know, you know, just uh, go ahead. Just. Yes, that's why my prejudice is there. Uh, maybe maybe somebody will change me so uh, one day, but nope. it ain't happening today. We, we're we're proud assholes. We will never change it. <laughs> and anybody from New York will tell you the same thing. What's happening, Home at May? This is Bobby D. Uh, I just wanted to pop in here real quick and let you guys know that Matt has a campaign going on right now. He's trying to uh, afford uh, some funds to some uh, women shelters in the area uh, and. In order to do so, he's trying to sell some t-shirts. Uh, so I thought it would be appropriate since he was su such an awesome guest uh, for me to go ahead and drop that link. So you can find that down below uh, right now and uh, go ahead and take a look at his shop there. Uh, see if you can find something that you like and then uh, you know all the proceeds are going to go to uh, battered women's shelters uh, in the West Georgia area. Uh, Maybe that's more, maybe more. I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get back over to the story. Uh, but I thank you guys very, very much for your attention. So I probably wasn't the most tactful in my approach. I will admit that I probably wasn't. But after that, I, we get 
she's going into the bedroom and grabbing armfuls of clothing and throwing them off a third floor balcony, telling me I need to get out. So I do. I walk out the door. Well, you guys were made for world star hip hop at this minute, at this time. Uh, Probably, yeah. (laughs) So here's where you'll probably agree that that's more true than you want to admit. I get down one flight of stairs and something clicks in my head and I go, no, I'm not leaving. Fuck that. I'm the man. I pay the rent. She can leave. So I turn back around, go back upstairs. You can get the fuck out. I pay the rent. Now, (laughs) pause here for a minute. At that time, she was actually making probably double the money I was making. So she had all the right to the apartment. But arrogant asshole man, you can't say that. It's true. You can give me that look. You know I'm right. That arrogant asshole man that we all have comes out. and I'm, Regardless, you, you're you playing that man card. I don't know, man. Like, I don't... <laughs> <laughs> I think every man has that that uh, integrity we want to call it. Absolutely. There's a, there's a certain... That's, that's a... I mean... That's a that's a conversation and it's a, that's they ask that question on online dating. You haven't you've been with your wife long enough so you don't know anything about online dating. There was an online there. dating when we met. Right. Well, so there. one of the questions that they always ask on every single one of them and is whether or not you are okay with dating someone who makes more money than you. And they every, wouldn't they wouldn't be asking that question if that wasn't a, a And and I guarantee you every man on there says he's okay with it. And a good 60 to 70% of them are lying through their damn teeth. All, all of them are. I won't, I won't, I won't say all. But a so. lot of them are. I don't think I've been in that. I, I, well, I know I haven't been in that situation before. It's it's a weird emasculating. It, I don't want to call it emasculating because it's really not. We make it emasculating because of our own ego and pride. It's. She makes more money than me now, obviously, because I'm unemployed. So, well, fifty percent of the, what I just said that I have never been in that situation before. Fifty percent of that is that I'm not very good with women. <laughs> <laughs> Neither am I. <laughs> I'll give you a hint. Neither am I. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> I mean, even in the times when I was making, uh, you know, seven fifty eight dollars an hour, uh, there was no, there was nothing there to compete with it. So. Uh, you know, me and my escort just did our own thing. For <laughs> uh, when I say escort, I mean a Ford escort. <laughs> <laughs> See, my thought process went to here's your money. <laughs> you, I, I don't care how much you made before me. You're not alone in that. There's a lot of people that just had that little sidetrack right there. <laughs> it's okay. I'm not judging, man. I, you okay. you can do you. It's okay. All right. So we've got we've we've went off on a little bit of a tangent, and I expect that that's not the last time that that's going to happen before we get finished recording. Yeah. But let's get back on track. You have now decided that you are the man and you would not be leaving your premises. Yes. So I go back into the house and obviously this didn't go over well with her. So this started a whole, I won't go too deep into that, but it it started this whole blow up conversation that as her mom's leaving, apparently come to find out she's calling 911 about 10 or 15 minutes into this conversation in our bedroom we hear the door open to the apartment and then the door to our bedroom comes flying open and there's two cops with pepper spray out pointed at my face telling me to get in the living room now because obviously our our argument was fairly loud and they said they could hear it coming up the stairs that's where the world star hip-hop came that's my yeah definitely so i i sit on the couch they take her out and we're conversating the the cop is like well what happened why were you guys arguing? Did it get physical? I can tell you. No, I can't. I don't remember putting my hands on her. She says I did only to push her out of the way. We had a little small opening between our couch and our love seat. I walked by. I remember bumping her because it was a little opening. She says I pushed her. Honestly, I'm probably going to lean more towards her side of the story. Probably being I was a little more forceful than I should have been. But it wasn't out of aggression or violence at the time. It was get out of the way. I've got somewhere to go and you're in my way. So I don't see that as being 
abuse in that sense of, of physical violence abuse, but I think it's kind of debatable. So uh, let me, I, I want to step in here and I, I, I don't want this to get too far off on one of those tangents that we just have returned from, but I would like to ask, uh, have you ever thought about doing regression therapy where you may, may, you know, being hypnotized so you can go back to that to that moment and see that Tom and see yourself in that Tom I would like to do that and I would like to go back to my childhood because there's a whole lot uh, if we're going to go down this tangent there is a lot of my childhood that I have completely and totally blocked out of my mind I have no memories until the age of about 15 16 period point blank none what so you don't have any memory of being younger than 15 years old? Nope. Man. I've got stories that people tell me, but no actual where I can go recall something that hasn't been told to me in a story. That's about the time that I started losing all my memories. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> so I, I would love to go back and, and have that regression therapy and see what happened there Yeah, that caused all of that. So I'm sure there was something in my past that triggered all of that. So if you do go, I want you to come back and, and and talk to us more about that. That would be that would be interesting. I want to I want to know. I'm curious too. I want to see what's inside that nugget. But would it be? <laughs> see, that's one reason I don't do it though, is because I wholeheartedly believe in all of my research that our brain protects us from things that we cannot handle. There's got to be a reason that my brain has chosen to protect me from whatever happened. And if I go back and relive it or experience it or remember, what a box, what, Pandora's box, is that going to open? What kind of impact is it going to have? Right? So that's kind of the, the sticking point there for me. Let's talk about this a little <laughs> bit more after, yeah. after we get finished with our story. All right. All right so, right. So. I, I will go with her side of it. I probably was a little more aggressive than I should have been. Now, as the cop and I are talking, I don't know where she is necessarily, but I do know that she's not in the apartment. And then maybe 10 minutes later, the, another cop comes walking in. The two of them step outside and talk. They walk back in. They ask me to stand up. They ask me to turn around and put my hands behind my back and on come the little fun bracelets that we all love so much. Sing Lang. Mm -hmm. down the stairs into the car and as we're pulling away i do remember her chrissy in the background saying he didn't do anything don't take him it was this whole rap thing they were talking about background don't take my man oh so, <laughs> oh no <laughs> right so there was that whole I thing i love him you get you get your hands away from him get off my man yeah, yeah, that, I, yeah, that whole thing. It happens it, just like that. Florida man type stuff. There you go. Yeah. Actually, ooh, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so there was that moment. You might as well head the hat on, friend. I probably did at that point. <laughs> Although I wasn't quite this bald, so maybe not. But uh we go to we go to county lockup and I get fingerprinted, I get mug shots, I get the whole nine yards, I sleep on the little fun little eighth inch thick mattresses they give you on the floor because the place was so packed there was no cot for me hmm. what year was that because that's the problem uh oh oh nine it's not the prisons N not not the jail is supposed to be a fun place to go but i mean overpopulation has been an issue in this country for a long time that's well, a that's a different story for a different take does not do it i will let one side note on that i will tell you that that experience completely changed my beliefs on people in prison up until that moment i wholeheartedly believed everybody was in there deserved to be in there were there for a reason leaving that place talking to the guys that were in there i don't think that for a minute anymore i think 90 percent of those people in, in county lockup not necessarily prison are there on misunderstandings or trumped up charges that have nothing to do with anything that happened I'm probably just like a possession charge, like they got caught with weed. With a guy, two, both of the guys that were in my cell, black guys, were there on that very charge. I'm so sick of that conversation. Me too. But. <laughs> Me too, but it is what it is. But I do remember I stayed up all night. The guy, one of the guys had a pen and some paper. And I, I wrote, she still has them. I wrote her two notes because I knew for a fact when I got out of that place, 
I was never going to see her again. That was, that was the end of our relationship. She was going to not be at the apartment when I got out and it was, that was it. So I remember I wrote her two notes. She still has them saved. I think she actually are in that Bible right there in that corner that we're not going to go into those because I would prefer not to, but there are two notes that were written to her in that basically telling her that I fucked up. This is not where I wanted to be. This is not how the situation was supposed to play out. I get out and lo and behold, she's actually still at the apartment. Blew my mind. I never expected that. I think that's probably one of the reasons why we're still together today is she, you've met her. She doesn't have that quit spirit. I think she saw something and didn't want to give up on it. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. So what was the next step? Like classes. So you started taking classes. And I was 12 weeks of anger management classes. We did those 12 weeks. Paid the first six weeks. It was bullshit. I didn't need to be there. I didn't have a problem. Everybody else had a problem. If people would just stop being assholes, I wouldn't have to be angry. Six weeks into that. I don't remember the class exactly, but the instructor said something totally changed my opinion. And I, went to the classes for three years and when I was supposed to be there for 12 weeks. In fact, the instructor and I are actually still close friends on my podcast. There's an episode coming out soon where him and I actually talk. Well, this will that drop before Sunday. No, that's going to be another few weeks. Okay. Well, this will be drop. This, this drops on, I don't know whom it may. I'm addressing you right now. I don't know when you're going to be watching this, but we do drop new episodes at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every Sunday afternoon. Yeah, that episode won't be up probably next month. Okay, <laughs> right on. Getting a little preview on that one. Awesome. But uh, him and I are still really close. And after a while of going there, he started having me teach his classes for him because I, I knew all the information that he was teaching. So I, I started teaching classes. He helped me get certified to teach in the state of Georgia, the, the family violence class. I taught that for about 10 years until mm -hmm. I quit in 2014. I think I quit. Te no, it was when I opened my own, opened my own business in 2014. I quit teaching in 2019, 2018, something like that. Just a few years ago. Cause I couldn't, I can't deal. Red tape in this state is terrible. They don't care about teaching people anything in those classes. It's just about getting money and I can't do that. Cannot do that at all. But that's in a nutshell, that's kind of where this started. When I quit teaching, I stopped teaching altogether for about six months. So you're trying to go where there ain't no red tape. Man. I'm trying to go where there is no red tape, where I can actually reach people on a level that I know will connect with them in a way that will cause actual change. Change. Yeah, man. Some actual personal change. And that's actually where all change starts is with the individual. Um, you, you, nothing no movement has been successful without it, without it starting first at, at with the individual and at home uh and uh and what i i think is very commendable uh what you're doing and uh i really do appreciate you being on here um I, i'd like to i'd like to extend the offer for you to come back and talk to us again in a later date uh especially if you go get that regression therapist so i, I want to see really thought about it either that or some kind of <laughs> hypnosis or, or something yes. i think it would be but it'd be scary because what understand. if you find something like you know what i'll go if you agree to do it i'll do it too let's go i don't know if there's anything in there that i'll that I should be scared of. <laughs> See, that's what like you know. got. You got fifteen years of unknown. I, I don't. I don't have right. that long. I don't have. <coughs> what if something me. comes up that shouldn't it ain't come up? Um, Can you get it through the the headphones? Um, I, I don't know. <laughs> we'll find out. Yeah, if you're listening man. and you test positive, it was Bobby's fault. <laughs> Good Lord, thanks. <laughs> I appreciate that. Just it wasn't me. I didn't cough. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> All right, so uh, that's that's it. Um, I'm going to be leaving your contact information and a link to your page on my website uh, down in the description box below. I, I would encourage all of you that are listening to go over and check out his material. Uh, what what's the name of the the 
your podcast, the the the, the website that that's hosting your podcast. I, There's I've got it hosted on Spreaker. Spreaker, that's it. That's the one I was trying to think of. I like their format over there, man. I really, I do too. Um, and it seems like they're doing. A, do they help you out with your? We'll talk about that a little later. <laughs> Let's not get sidetracked. We're trying to close out the episode. I'm sorry. Uh, my ADD has been showing all day, for real. Like, it started first thing this morning. But I have had some great epiphanies today. Uh, but uh, that's going to be it for tonight. Go ahead and hit that like button. Go ahead and hit subscribe if you haven't already. Um, and tell your friends and family about what you heard here today. All right. Everybody needs help with anger. Everybody does. Everybody needs some help. Um, yeah, check it out. Y'all take it easy. Peace. Thank you for having me. No problem.